Hello, welcome back to Animated Literacy. This is lesson two from the Story Song and Action Book. And in this lesson, we're going to be introducing Polly Panda along with her complete story and her song with gestures. Before we go into that, a few organizational things. In each of the lessons, I'm going to spend some time where I will be talking to the parent or to the teacher about how to teach the lesson. Then there are periods where you can bring your child in to watch the lesson along with you so that I can teach the lesson to the child, or you can simply watch all the way through the lesson and then turn off the screen and do the entire lesson with your child. Whichever way you choose to do it, be sure that you spend time with the screen off where you're simply working in a natural organic environment where you're looking into the child's eyes and they're looking into yours and you're inter interacting because screens are no substitute for personal interaction. Before you go into the lesson, you're going to want to have either a chart or a set of picture cards up that represent each character and each of the sounds that we're teaching. I like to put the chart up first in black and white and then after I have introduced a complete story and song the way I'm going to do with Polly Panda, then we can take the color version of Polly Panda and we can either color the black and white from the chart or we can paste the color version up on top of that. It, you can either use a chart like this, which is similar to what you can print off of our website, or in my classroom, I like to use the black and white version of the half size picture cards. Or if you have lots of space to put up pictures, you can put up the full size picture cards. So it just, it just depends on your environment, which one you'd like to have up there, but you need to have them all up. So before we go into Polly Panda's lesson, we always start out by reviewing Are You Sleeping Brother John? Because keep in mind, there's two things that are essential for children to be successful in reading and writing and avoid that fourth grade slump. One of the two is phonological awareness, which leads to word recognition. And the other one is listening comprehension, which has to come from reading to kids. So always keep in mind, those are your two primary targets. The foundation for phonological awareness in animated literacy is the song Forever Jaca. And so we do the Forever Jaca Are You Sleeping song every day, oftentimes more than once a day, all year long. And then we expand into those other songs that you find in the research and overview section in Unit 8. If you have always wanted to play an instrument but haven't started yet, or if you already play an instrument, Forever Jaca is the absolute easiest song that you can begin to introduce the playing of a guitar or a mandolin or a ukulele or whatever it is that you want to use because you can play the entire song all in one chord position. So all you have to do is get your fingers into that position and then strum all the way through. So um, this is a, I'm playing here in the key of D and the D chord is one of the absolute simplest chords to play on the guitar. So if you're doing that, it would sound like this. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, Brother John, morning bells are ringing, morning bells are ringing, ding dong ding, ding dong ding. Or if you want to get a little more elaborate, you can do it this way. So here's Dr. Ollie Ostrich. So everybody point to your mouth and go, ah, and his verse sounded like this. Are you at the doctor's? Are you at the doctor's? Brother Ollie, Brother Ollie, Ollie's bells are saying, Ollie's bells are saying, ah, 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 ah. And then if we go into Ernie, everybody take hold of your steering wheel and show that wheel turning. Are you turning? Are you turning? Brother Ernie, Brother Ernie, Ernie spells are saying, Ernie spells are saying, er, 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 er. So that can add another dimension to your work with animated literacy and it may inspire your child to also want to pick up an instrument and play and strum along. So now we're going to go ahead and review the rest of the children's names that we did in the first lesson, and then we're going to move on to introducing more names. So if you can introduce all of your children's names in the first lesson, that's great. If you can't, you introduce as many as you have time for, and then you review those in the next lesson, and then go back and start adding the others in until you have a verse for every child in the classroom. 
So we just did Oscar and we did Ernie. Now here's Amy, so she's skating to the bay. Are you skating? Are you skating, brother Amy? And now the kids are on the edge of their seat waiting for me to make a mistake, which is letting them know it's okay to make mistakes. And they're comprehending and correcting me, which is what good readers do and poor readers tend not to do. And we want to train them to be good readers. So I go, brother Amy, and they go, no, sister, sister Amy. Amy spells are saying, Amy spells are saying, A, 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 A. And here was Mikey moving his magic mop. Now remember, when we move from vowels to consonants, a huge change needs to take place. When babies are producing their vowel sounds beginning at two to four months old, they're saying them one at a time, just like we did in the previous verses. But now here we have Mikey beginning with a consonant. And so babies naturally put those consonants in front of the vowels and, and they start manipulating sounds to change ba ba to boo boo and ga ga to goo goo and, and ba ba to mama. And so we're doing that same kind of thing here. So on the bell tones, if it's a consonant, we're going to take away the d from ding dong ding and treat the ing just like a vowel, which people call the rhyme portion of the word. And then we're going to place in the child sound. So here's Mikey moving Mimi Mermaid's magic mop. Are you moving a magic mop? Are you moving a magic mop? Sister, no, brother Mikey, brother Mikey. Mikey spells are saying, Mikey spells are saying, ming mong ming. Ming mong ming. Are you shaving? Are you shaving? Sister, brother, Sean, brother, Sean. Sean spells are saying, Sean spells are saying, shing, shong, shing. Remember, Trisha had two sounds at the front of her name, so we got t and r. Are you tickling and riding? Are you tickling and riding? Br sister, Trisha, sister, Trisha. Trisha spells are saying, Trisha spells are saying, tring, trong, tring, tring, trong, tring. And so, so now your kids can try to tickle with one hand and ride with the other hand. Because remember, if we keep it challenging, what happens to the brain? The brain grows. If we keep it simple and boring, what happens? The brain shrinks. So you've got to keep in mind that in the early steps, all children have to do is copy me. And they may approximate as they're copying me. So their copying gets better and better as they practice. And then they gradually move from copying to comprehending and starting to move to doing it independently. Now, we, this is a child we didn't do last time. So Emily comes up and I go, Emily, your name starts with Edgar Elf. And Edgar Elf has to escape, so has to exercise so that he can grow big muscles so that he can escape from Ellie Elephant if she escapes from her enclosure. So for exercising, I want you to show me those great big muscles and go, exercise, eh. Now that's a hard sound for a lot of kids to hear. So they'll say exercise correctly, but they may not get eh perfect. Just keep going and after, over the period of time, they'll start to refine their production of the short E sound. Are you exercising? Are you exercising, brother, sister, Emily, sister, Emily? Emily's bells are saying, Emily's bells are saying, eh, 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 eh. Now, Jean comes up and I go, Jean, your name starts just like Jenny Jaguar. And here she is in the circus juggling her jars filled with J's that jingle jangle. So everybody move your hands up and down in a juggling motion and go, are you juggling? Are you juggling? Br Sister Jean, Sister Jean, Jean's bells are saying, Jean's bells are saying, Jing, Jong, Jing, Jing, Jong, Jing. Now we have Gracie, and Gracie, just like Trisha, starts with two sounds. So her first sound is like Gilda Goose, and here's Gilda Goose gliding, so go G. Her second sound is Rosie Raccoon riding, so show me riding. And when we put those two together, we're gliding with one hand, we're riding with the other hand, and we've got gring grong, gring, gring grong, gring. Are you gliding and riding? Are you gliding and riding? Br Sister Gracie, Sister Gracie, Gracie spells are saying, Gracie spells are saying, gring grong, gring, gring grong, gring. 
So there are so many different adaptations that we'll be going through in the lessons that you will have some verses that are repeats so the kids can build up confidence with those. And then you'll have other verses that will be brand new each day that you've never done before. So now we're going to go into our lesson for Polly Panda. And the first thing in every lesson is to say to the kids, boys and girls, I have something new to teach you. What are we going to do first? We're going to talk about what we know. Why are we going to do that? Well, we need to glue the new information that I'm presenting to the old information that's already stored in our head. So raise your hand to answer some of these questions. How many of you have ever been to a school? And the kids look at me kind of funny, but raise their hand because we may be sitting in school. Okay, how many of you have to travel to get to school? And they all raise their hand. So what are some ways you got to school? So we can talk about walking or riding. And so transportation is a second topic. And as I'm introducing the characters, every character has multiple topics that you can talk about. And so each time you review a character, you can focus on a different topic. So now we've got school, we got transportation. Polly in her story likes to paint, so we can talk about painters and about mixing different colors. She goes to a baseball game, so we can talk about baseball. Um, she pleases the parents by signing autographs, and so you can talk about who is someone you've done something special for, and what did you do, and how did they feel, and what did they say. So it could be for your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your grandpa, your puppy dog, your kitten, or whoever you have done something for to make feel good. Then we move into reading to the children from books related to any of those topics. Now, I understand that you may not be able to have books for every single lesson in animated literacy when you're first starting. So if you don't have a book, um, that's fine. You can just access prior knowledge and go into our story because our stories are complete stories, just like quality literature with rich vocabulary and story structure and all of those elements. But do be sure that you read to your children every single day from quality books. So if you don't have a book that relates to the lesson, you could start the lesson by reading to the children from a book that's not related and then do your accessing of prior knowledge, or you could do it at a different period or different time of the day. It's just critical that children are read to every day from quality literature to develop their listening comprehension. So here are some books that I have used in my classroom. One of my favorites is the book, My First Day of School by P.K. Hallinan. And as you listen to this, I want you to see if you can think of an old story that was rewritten to create this one. And it goes, sounds like this. My first day of school, I hopped out of bed and dressed in my best from my toes to my head. This day would be special from morning till night and I had to be certain to get it just right. So if I kept on reading, I'm sure you'd recognize the night before Christmas. And I like to use books like that that are based on old patterns because we do a lot of work with our pattern substitution songs. And so here I'm modeling that real authors take an old pattern and rewrite it by substituting their words and get published and land in a bookstore. Um, here's another version. This one is the night before kindergarten and it reads like this. "'Twas the night before kindergarten, and as they prepared, the kids were excited and a little bit scared. They tossed and they turned about in their beds while visions of school supplies danced in their heads. And Natasha Wing has the night before preschool, the night before kindergarten, the night before first grade, night before second grade, an entire series of books that are wonderful to use. This one I mentioned in an earlier lesson gets us into nonfiction expository text because another topic in Polly Panda's story is flying. So after we have read those books, we can start to talk about Polly Panda, and I can introduce you to her story. Now, there's several ways that you can introduce the stories. We have a picture book of the alphabet character stories, and so here's Polly Panda's story. And in our picture book, there are four pages that retell the story with illustrations. Then there is a fifth page that has the gesture for the character. And then there's a sixth page that has the song. 
And so you could use this just as like a bedtime story and read to the kids from our storybook. Then we also have to help support this a mini version. And in this one, we've cut the stories down so that what you can do is have the children make individual little books to go along with the story. And so here's the, the a version of Dr. Ollie Ostrich that we've done from there. So we've simply duplicated the pages and it takes one and a half sheets to duplicate each story. And so you've got four pages that will retell the story. So each child, if you're doing this in the classroom, can take home a storybook the day that it's been introduced for their parents to read to them at home. Then there's a fifth, the fifth page has the character's gesture on it. And then the sixth page has the character's song. So that um, children need to hear stories over and over and over again because the rich language cannot be mastered in a single telling. Now I go into the actual reading or telling of the story. And here I'm going to tell the story rather than read it. And when I tell a story, I like to use as many props as I can collect. And so this is how I did it in my classroom for many, many years. Um, here's Polly Panda. Everybody wave and say, hi, Polly Panda. Now, Polly Panda lives way off in China and school is very far away. So Polly Panda has to travel to get to school. So she says to her mom, mom, please, I wanna to go to preschool. Her mom says, school's so far away. If we start walking, oh, I like the way you're showing me walking. By the time we get there, school will be over. Polly says, I know a faster way. We could get onto a bicycle and we can ride to school. But Polly's mom says a bike is still too slow. Polly says, I know still a faster way to get to school. We could get into a car or a bus or a truck and we could drive to school. Mom says it's still too slow. Polly says, I know we can get into an airplane. So now Polly is flying up in the air with the airplane and she looks to the pilot and she says, but there's no place for the plane to land. The pilot says, well, that's okay. We'll just give you a parachute. So now Polly Panda parachutes down to the playground of Penelope's prim and proper preschool where all the children go running home that day and they say, Mom, Dad, in class, we have a panda. So who do you think wants to see the panda now? All the parents the next day are parading to Penelope's prim and proper preschool to see Polly Panda, where they soon discover that Polly Panda is quite a professional painter. And the pictures that she's painting are so pretty that the next day when the parents come to Penelope's Prim and Proper Preschool, they've opened up their piggy banks and they've taken out all the pennies and they're using their pennies to purchase the pretty pictures that Polly Panda paints for only pennies a piece. Well now, before she knows it, Polly Panda has a problem. She's been painting so fast that she runs out of paper. Well, the, child, the parents say, that's okay, tomorrow we'll bring things for you to paint on. So one parent brings a package wrapped in pretty paper for their child's birthday party and Polly Panda takes out her favorite pink and purple paint and she paints a pretty picture on the package. Another parent brings a purple platypus. Another brings a pink pig. Another brings a pokey little puppy dog. Another brings a purple poodle. One brings a prickly porcupine. Another brings a paper plate. One brings a pumpkin pie, and one forgets to bring anything, so she just turns around and Polly Panda paints a pretty picture on the pockets of her pants. Well, now you might think Polly Panda's problem is solved, but it's getting bigger and bigger because she can't paint fast enough to please all the parents. Well, that night, her family and friends take her to a baseball game between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the San Diego Padres, and Polly notices that before the game, People are parading up to the players, carrying things, and the players are reaching in their pocket, but they're not taking out a paintbrush. They're taking out a pen or a pencil, and they're doing something much faster than painting a picture. So she looks to see what the players are doing, and she discovers they're just printing their name 
or signing their autograph. So the next day, when the parade of parents comes to Penelope's prim and proper preschool to purchase the pretty pictures that Polly Panda paints for only pennies apiece, Polly Panda takes out her paintbrush, her favorite pink and purple paint, but she doesn't paint a picture on each object. Instead, she just prints her special letter P. So now, whenever you see our picture of Polly Panda, or you see the letter P, I want you to think about painting, pretend to take out a paintbrush, hold your paper in front of you, move the paintbrush up and down like this and go, P. now let's see how Polly Panda would sing her song for Frere Jaca. Are you painting, are you painting, Polly Panda, Polly Panda, Polly's bells are saying, Polly's bells are saying, ping pong, ping, ping pong, ping. Now Polly has a special song that goes like this, and her song is sung to the tune of an old song that goes sailing, sailing on the bounding main. Only when Polly sings it, it's this way. So let's do some gestures for it. And in the back of the story song and action book, you'll find a description all of all the gestures I'm using. Everybody show me the circles that a panda has around their eyes and sing this back to me. Polly panda, Polly panda, Painting purple peas, painting purple peas. Polly paints her purple peas. Polly paints her purple peas. Put your hand on your pants, on pants. And now make a circle and pizza pans. Now show me how many different ways you can make a letter P. So I can make it with one hand this way and a circle this way. Um, see how, explore and see how many different ways you can make a letter P. And then sing this back to me. Peas for Polly, peas for Polly, painting purple peas, painting purple peas. Now pretend to lift a heavy package. Painting peas on packages. Show me a plate and plates. So show me a nice round plate and porcupines. Now let's do that once more. Polly Panda, Polly Panda, painting purple peas. Painting purple peas, Polly paints her purple peas, Polly paints her purple peas. Show me your pants, on pants and pizza pans, on pants and pizza pans. Show me your pea again. Peas for Polly, peas for Polly, painting purple peas, painting purple peas. Now show me your package, painting peas on packages. Painting peas on packages. Show me your plate and plates and porcupines. And here's our porcupine quills on plates and porcupines. Now, after we have, have trained the children using the gestures, instead of me gesturing, I'm going to have the children gesture on their own while I track the words for Polly Panda. Now, this is our book of songs and stories to read. And so that's available, or you can make up your own enlarged version of it. So now as I hold this, I'm going to track the words, and this time I'll turn on our recording of Polly Panda and have you sing along and gesture. So here's Polly again, ready? Polly Panda, painting purple peas. Keep painting. Polly paints her purple peas, show your pants, and, pants and pizza pants. Peas for Polly, painting purple peas. Painting peas on packages and plates and porcupines. What's your sound for pea? For painting. Okay, now the children get to go back to their seats, and this is a page that is duplicated from the Story, Song, and Action book. So uh, this has an outline P, so when they go back to their seat, they can take out their crayons, and they can rainbow write over that letter P. Then if you're doing this in a classroom situation, it has the song down here at the bottom for, to reinforce the character, and then it has a description of the gesture. If you're doing this in homeschooling, you could just take the same page 
and you could track and sing along with the words so that the kids can see what those words look like on the page. Now, each lesson in animated literacy starts by accessing prior knowledge, and then it ends by going back and revisiting that prior knowledge. So I have the children take this page back to their seat and turn it over on the back, and on the back of the page, tell me some way that their personal experiences relate to Polly Panda. So you could tell me the favorite thing you like to do in school, how you traveled to school, what you have done to please someone, where you like to go with your family and friends, so any of the kinds of topics that are in the story. So here's an example of one child who went back to his seat and he has drawn a picture of a baseball game because he likes baseball. And you can see in his picture, here's the batter up here and he's hit the ball, it's going through the air and here's the pitcher who threw it and here's the base and here's the outfielder. And so after they have drawn their picture, I tell them, you can either write a sentence about your picture or you can wait for me and tell me a sentence and I'll write it on your paper. And then you can take a pencil and you can trace over the top of what I wrote or you can write it underneath. Now, at the beginning of the school year, none of my children would attempt any form of writing. So I always wrote it. And the kids who had higher skills tended to copy my sentence. The kids who were more at the copying stage tended to trace over the top. So here I go behind this child and I go, tell me about your picture. And the child says, I went to the game. And so I write that. Then at the end of the day, I go back around each child and say, can you remember what that said? And the kids read it back to me. This child has drawn a picture. And when I ask her what her picture says, she tells me that her picture says, I paint purple peas. And so that's something that she does that is similar to Polly Panda. And this child has drawn a picture and she's like Polly because she likes to paint. So she says, I can paint a star. And I write that on her paper. So that's the end of the basic lesson for Polly Panda. Before we go on to lesson number three, I'm going to come back and work with the review lessons and extensions of Polly Panda's lesson. Then we'll go on to lesson number three for Uncle Upton. So thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you in the next session.